So today I'm going to talk to you about household budgeting. If you're in work, one of the things that you'll need to do now is to be very thoughtful about how you use your money efficiently. And if you've retired, you're probably faced with declining savings rates, limited um, dividend payments, and possibly the value of your pension has declined as a result of stock market falls. So I'm going to take you through some quick and simple ways to actually get your household budget in shape. So this is pretty easy. What you need to do is not worry about the format, just work out what you like best. So some people like a spreadsheet, other people big lists, some people use notebooks. What you need to do is just find the source documents. Bank statements, credit card statements, store card statements. Look through at least three months worth of information and if you have time, try and look through years. So put what you believe to be your typical spendings into different categories. Here is my suggestion. Home accommodation, that's your mortgage or your rent and your council tax. Utilities, so things like your gas and electricity bill, phone, broadband, etc. Insurance, car, home, life insurance. Transport, so your car, fuel, train tickets that you may use, etc. Food and groceries clothes, holidays, entertainments and socialising, so things like trips to the pub, savings and any other categories that reflect your own spending patterns. So people often ask me, how do you take account of things like ongoing cash expenditure and big bills that you maybe pay once a year? So for ongoing cash expenditure, it's important that you take a pen and paper and you make a big list of what you spend your money on and that you keep that up to date for a little while so that you really understand where your spending patterns are and how much you're spending on what. It's important that you don't cheat with that. So some people just leave things out, so don't cheat yourself. For big bills, one of the things that you should do is really make sure that you divide them by 12 so that you get a monthly amount. And then I always recommend that you round these up to the nearest five pounds because that'll give you a little bit of wriggle room when you come to think about your budget on an ongoing basis. So you need to pull everything together. So things like your salary, bonus, pensions, dividends, income from any property rentals that you have and savings interest. So unless you live alone, this really needs to be done with your partner and possibly other members of your household. So there's no point in you thinking about cutting expenditure in a particular area if that isn't something that's going to work for everybody else who will be impacted by the budget. So it's now really time to be honest with yourself and to make sure that you set a budget that delivers what you need as a family. Work out the goal for your budget first. The actual savings you need to make come later. A powerful goal will give you something to aim for and something that you and your partner can align on. Ideally, make your goal smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time-based. So examples of smart goals could include things like the following. So pay off my £10,000 credit card bill by June 2022. Save £600 for a holiday by May 2021 and start to save £200 to put into my pension by January. Once you're clear about your goal, you can use this to stay focused and that will help you stick to your new budget. So for things like your gas and electricity, your broadband, your home phone, car insurance, home insurance, those sort of things, use a price comparison service and just get your cheapest deal. And then for other things, just change the choices that you buy when you're making a purchase. So in Sainsbury's today, that was £5.50, but that was only one ninety-five. Tackle discretionary expenditure. This is often dominated by those things that make life fun. It's important that you agree plan changes to discretionary items with your partner, so it allows you to live in a way that works for everyone. Examples of savings that could be made to discretionary items include reducing the number of times you eat out or drinking less alcohol each week. So the budget will only work if you keep on top of your expenditure. So you need to know how much money you're spending on things and review that against your budget. If you're overspending, you need to rein in so that you keep on top of things and on track with the goals that you've set yourself. So over time, you should get more practiced at managing your budget. So you do need to be honest with yourself and review things regularly. 
if you're overspending, are you overspending because you set the budget too tight and you can't possibly achieve it? Or are you overspending because you're being lax and you really need to rein yourself in? It's important that you know where you stand on these things because that way you can make sure that you achieve the goals you really need to.